Folks, today we are not in the shop, we are in the bedroom, and we're going to be making some shelves to go up here. So effectively we're going to have a one, two, three, and the same thing mirrored on the other side, so one, two, and three down. And then I think we're going to put a picture in the middle. We don't want to go up too high because there's going to be some cove lighting once this uh, paper gets taken down. So uh, yeah, I'm going to go off to the uh, wood store here that's uh, just up the road and figure out what they've got. And uh, we'll be making floating shelves here, so they're going to have no bracket or anything underneath. And uh, that'll be quite the, the challenge to, to make. So that's, uh, that's the plan. That's what we're going to work on. And uh, yeah, let's go get some wood. And uh, once I figure that out, I'll uh, bring you back out to uh, the wood and start to form it into the shapes we need. Let's get it done. So this is the uh, wood that I ended up getting. It is poplar, so hoping it'll work out pretty well. And uh, effectively what we want to do is um, we're going to cut a relief into the front and uh, the sides. It'll be uh, flat on the back. This is four sand wood, so there's nothing else I have to do other than get us close to the shape that we want. So uh, we're just gonna create kind of a chamfer on the uh, edges here. And then we'll sand down. There is a, another guy that made a couple floating shelves. I, I'm blanking on his name. The video will be in uh, the description below and, and whatnot. So if you want to go take a look at that, that's what I'm basing this off of. Big thank you. And uh, yeah, so I think I'm just going to do, I don't know, probably a 60 degree or so, maybe 70 degree angle and uh, rip these all down. So let's go over to the uh, table saw and get that started. All right, folks, so we got the uh, the corners all cut down and everything sanded. It was already for sand, but the edges were cut. It seems to be uh, the shop that I picked these up from, the, the local lumberyard has a pretty aggressive tooth uh, cut on their cross-cut saw. So there was a, a bit of tearing up on the edge that we took care of with the orbital sander there. Uh, just uh, used 150 here. Uh, really happy with how it's all turning out and uh, how all of the bevels kind of came together. So I'm just uh, fingers crossed here that I don't cause uh, any issues when we need to drill and assign pins. Because uh, what I'm going to do is I've uh, got some 3 it's all thread and I'm going to drill a slightly smaller hole than uh, the all thread teeth engagement and send those into studs and then these are just going to slide right over them and then as soon as weight goes on them they're, uh, they're not going to move. So. Yeah, pretty happy with uh, how this turned out so far, and uh, I'm pretty sure these will look uh, really nice up on the wall. But uh, time to get this stain off my hands and let that stain uh, get sucked up into the board and then uh, finish off gassing. So I'll probably see you guys tomorrow where uh, we'll wrap this project up. Alrighty, folks, welcome back. Today is tomorrow, and it looks like all of the stain is doing a excellent job and I didn't leave any runs or fingerprints over any of them so I, I guess the next step is uh, we're gonna start taking some of the all thread which is what's going to go into the studs and uh, we'll, we'll be cutting it down to a, a reasonable length and I think I'm gonna start with the the probably the easiest one which is gonna be the one I didn't get on camera I did that one this morning and I realized after doing all of the shelves which are going to go up on that wall that I wanted another shelf for the sound bar underneath the TV. So that's what this guy is and I think uh, we're going to go put it up first. So uh, this one's only six inches deep. These are eight inches deep up on the, the top here. Uh, it was made identically to uh, the other ones. So yeah, we're, uh, we're going to take these and uh, create uh, a couple places for the all thread to go into. And then uh, we'll go mark where we want our holes to be in uh, the actual uh, piece here. Because uh, 
It's kind of a weird order of operations. I can't drill the holes into this until I know where the studs are, and I don't know where the studs are until I take this inside and actually put it exactly where it needs to be. So, let's uh, let's go make two or three somewhat, just, just a little bit shorter uh, bits out of the all thread, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, folks, so that went into the wall pretty well, and uh, all of my measuring seems to have worked out reasonably well because uh, just a little tap, tap, tap with the palm on the end, and it slid right into place. Obviously, the cables are going to have to go somewhere. Uh, probably going to just punch a hole in the behind the TV and then just drop it down next to that outlet down there and uh, maybe then send a little bit of Smurf tube to one of the corners, probably the corner over there where the bookshelf is right now, and that will uh, allow electronic things to live, you know, so we can get power and whatnot. I think if we're going to do anything really interesting here, we'll probably actually just go with some kind of wireless 4K setup, and that way we can have all of the devices connected to a matrix in the middle of the house, and depending on who wants to play what where, uh, it can just select this input, that output, and uh, have it get shipped to wherever it needs to be, be it the projector up on the ceiling or here in the bedroom and that would allow us to even play computer games and whatnot to any device anywhere but uh, that's that's future knee problems for now we have another wall where six more of these need to go up so uh let's get a uh, cracking on that all right folks we are working on the big wall over here and there are six kind of shelves that we're going to be putting in there's going to be one here, two, and three, and then uh, this is about the center point of the wall, so we're going to mirror that, and then there's going to be one, two, and three. Now where this tape, well, sort of is slash was, works for me, because I'm tall, but uh, my fiancé is not so tall, and uh, that makes this shelf completely useless. So. We're going to move this down probably six to eight inches. Uh, it'll still be a stretch to get up here to these top ones, but at least they'll still be visible. So, going to be doing that. And uh, I think the number one thing is going to be finding the levels. And then I'm going to put some reference marks down. And then uh, I'm going to find the studs within there and find where I need the, uh, the holes to go. And then uh, once that's done, I will set the holes in the wall. And then we'll go bring the wood back in with its end stops. We'll mark where I need to uh, drill those and then uh, take them back outside and drill them. That way we'll only have like 12 holes of sawdust and wood strewn out on the side of this wall. Let's get it done. Well, that was quite the adventure. My stud finder hates this wall. I think it has to do with a really aggressive texture on here. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there, I know there's a stud here, but if I turn it on and come over here, it says there's something. Tells me there's power, but nothing. Absolutely nothing. Oh, but it thinks there's a stud here. I guarantee you there's no stud there. L l listen. Hollow. Now as I get close to the stud, listen how the pitch goes up. You hear that? Stud. No stud. Stud finder? Garbage. What? It's called the Stud Sensor HD70 from Zircon. What's really funny is uh, when I installed the one underneath the TV, 
and got the TV bracket all sorted out. It worked perfectly fine on that wall, just not this exterior wall, which is unfortunate. <laughs> what can you do? So, uh, yeah. Oh, I drilled all but the last one, so let me go over there and drill that last one. And then, uh, oh no, I drilled this one. I just thought I didn't. Yeah, so we're going to need 8 plus 6. What is that, 14? We're going to need 14 uh, cut and ground all thread chunks to poke in the, the wall there. Let's, uh, let's go make that happen. All right, so a couple lessons from last time. I marked all of these two inches deep so that I know how far they need to go into the wall. And uh, the other thing, a deep socket, because as I ground the ends of these rods, uh, I have to put the nuts down a ways. And the super shallow impact that I was using, this guy bottomed out before we get to, uh, you know, actually get a full grip on the onto the uh, the nuts. So let's uh, hop back into the time lapse and I'm gonna send a whole bunch of all thread into my wall. But uh, before I do that, I'm gonna wipe the wall down. Uh, and I've, I've marked a lot on it, but uh, the good news is it's all graphite and it should come right off with a, a wet rag and a little bit of elbow grease. And then we'll just be left with the three billion holes that I had to put in the top right there to find a stud and then I could make some guesstimations from there. A couple of those studs did wander though. They're definitely not level to whatever gravity is nowadays. It's, it's odd. Uh, it is almost 50 years old. So let's get the graphite on, the rods down, and then uh, we'll start bringing in uh, the pieces of wood and marking where they're going to need to get drilled. And then it's just bringing them back in and putting them in place. It's gonna be awesome. We're so close. All right, folks, so here it is. We are done, and I'm really happy with how this turned out. Although there is a couple mistakes that were made. First off, up here eh, towards the wall, there are some areas that got, well, a couple extra screws drilled, not quite where it would be covered. In addition to that, I screwed up right here and cut out a little bit of a uh, kind of the, the drill came poking up there. But uh, other than that, we're pretty pretty golden. We've got things down uh, probably within about a quarter inch of each other. You know, it's it's not perfect, but almost all of these are very level, and I hope they uh, remain that way. And uh, when you put load on them, oh geez, don't worry, I got it. This is gonna get hung. <laughs> uh, this is gonna get hung uh, right there in the center. And uh, sure enough, my tape mark, which was marking the center of the wall, is not bad for, you know, eyeballing it. And uh, yeah, so there, there we go. This is the new uh, shelving here. And uh, there's a shelf over here underneath the TV. And uh, yeah, there we go. Floating shelves for not that much now. All of my fiance's rocks need to go uh, up there in a place that they'll be a little bit more visible and prominent and not on this old bookshelf, which I have no idea what we're going to do with. So there's that. Thanks for sticking along with this project. And as always, um, there is a video on screen right now that the YouTube algorithm thinks you might like. Feel free to give it a, a watch if you made it this far. Uh, please you know, consider subscribing or drop a comment down below if you got any questions. And as always, get out there and do something in your shop.